Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazeas here from the Automator, and today we're looking at the, what we automated this week without a hotkey. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. So I ran the script we uh, we created in one of these videos. Um, let's just start going through the list. It's a, it's a new year, 2024, and uh, this first one we can't get into, but um, we actually had a client call, and we the first version we did, we used really, even though we were automating Excel, we wanted to give it to him in a format that he could edit. So we were sending tabs and things. And then I said, hey, Irfan, let's let's create another version using Calm just to show how it works as well. Interesting enough, it actually hit a problem with it. And it was because he was using V2.02, I think. Right. And, and uh, Connie with Prompt Assistant, when he imported the Excel library, he had the same issue. issue. And when they upgraded, um, it negates, it, it goes away. So there's a weird part with that. Um, so yeah, that's what those were. Um, GUI test studio. I think I was just playing with stuff. Mailgun. Um, so we we were having. I, yeah, I created that one. That is a new API that I'm creating, and that was uh, I created a, a an individual folder to kind of connect to the Mailgun API, and and we were using this to create the um, check logs. If you go down a little bit after our auto suggester, you see the check logs. It just uh, for the drip campaign. What it does is that it connects to Mailgun, gets the logs from Mailgun, and lists them in a list view so that we can compare with the drip campaign script that we had because that's some weird issues with that one. Yeah. And um, this is kind of like something that allowed me to compare the logs. Basically. I was going to say, because we were having yeah, a big issue with this drip campaign where even though at the, the point in time, our log would say we sent the correct email they were still getting the second email out of the what 23 22, 22 yeah okay, list and uh it was very very confusing we think we finally figured it out but um i said let's we were manually having to go look at the law the from a browser look at the traffic Perspective. in mailgun which is our api tool for deploying emails um and see what we think we sent and then what was there and it was i said hey that's an api we can just go pull that data and have an easier way to compare those so um, so we did that. Maybe maybe later on we can make a video on that problem because it has to do with loops. When we when we talk about loops and your assumptions after the loop finishes, because that was that's what was happening to me. Yeah, it'll be hard we'll to, to, to to explain. No. <laughs> well, it's it's hard because we can't show what the data is the problem, right? So. No, but I can replicate in a different video. We I'm gonna replicate something similar to explain what the problem is. Um, this one now. Let me let me actually open this one. Let's see if we can demo it. But uh, I'll open, so watch, edit it. So this is, uh, it uses your ChatGPT API. And it, it what it does is, and I, I tweaked it a little bit. I added my hotkey. I added my notify class to help let me know things are going. And we flipped some of the wording because it was just kind of confusing. But when I, if I launch it, now it's running. Um, I'm going to come over to site. And now I'm going to talk for a couple seconds and we'll see how that does. Hopefully it works really well. Okay, now it's processing it. It saves it as a local MP3 file, sends it up to ChatGPT using your token. There we go. And then returns it back. And again, it, it's auto pasting it wherever you are, which I would prefer it to let me easily have a choice of whether I want to push it into the clipboard or paste it. Um, yeah. It's well, not that it's bad. It's just I, I'd right. rather have that option, that preference. The other thing is, I would say, you see the message that said processing? It should only go away after the script is trying to paste. So it would be like when the script yep. sent it and received it, then I say finish processing and then I paste. So that, that notification should go after that is done. But I, I think it's doing a great job. And, and, and when I tested it myself, like we, I spoke um, with the microphone, um, you know, close or, or or muted or something. No, not muted. Um, muffled, like muffled sounds and everything. And it, it, and it picked up everything perfectly fine. And I have an accent and everything, so it, it, it did a really good job at uh, understanding what I was saying, technically. Yeah. So um, I'll try to remember to put the URL where I grabbed this from. Like I said, I tweaked it some to because there's no notifications built in. So when you hit the hot key, you're like, is it running? You don't right? know. Yeah. You don't know if something's so, happening. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, I'm not knocking what he's done. I just and this was this this variable was the word not recording. And so this was not not recording and not re and I'm like, it's just really confusing. So anyway, so I made some minor tweaks to it. 
but uh, let's get back. It is pretty cool. So um, this auto word suggester, um, that, let's see if, if um, I'm not sure which one we should actually use. Let me just open this um, The event-based one. Um, there's one that says event-based, and that's the one that we're working with. Okay, so let's let's do fuzzy, uh, and then I'll again go back to site. And now, right now, we put in like auto hotkey main word. So this isn't actually. Hold on, let's let's use Notepad because otherwise you're like, hey, yeah, well, site does that. Mm -hmm. So I can think of like, oh, I want an auto hotkey variable. Um, hey, look, here are my auto hotkey variables. Right, so it, it's pretty cool. Now we're working this where we're making it. Little more advanced, you can choose your matching. Um, and most importantly, you can easily put in a list of words so it'll be customized to to you and your preferences. We're also going to make a different version that watches your clipboard text. If if you had text in your clipboard, it's gonna be doing like just like the Windows V does, but it'll as you type, it'll start offering that up, right? Which I think is gonna be pretty amazing, pretty helpful. Right. So yeah, so that we've been working on that. Then we have the check logs that I was referring to, the queue manager. So that 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 with the process manager, process queue, that was a very very hard problem to troubleshoot. Yeah. Especially because when we started adding logs to each action, right. the logs were saying you're doing the right thing, but right. in the end, the right. action was happening totally differently. And I was like, how how is that happening? And and one of them, even though you had, you know, we were working through it, and you're like, no, I've already, I can't figure it out, Joe. Like, it's just not making sense. And I'm like, well, hey, there's me, Irfan, and Isaiah here. I said, why don't you explain it to us one more time with all three of us here? Right. Let's talk it through. And at that point, when you were explaining it, you you said, oh, wait a minute. This actually is sending down there, not here. Right. And that was a very weird. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so my main point, this is why we always tell you guys work with other people, even if they're not programmers, just by speaking it out, often you solve your own problems. You realize the flaws in your logic because your brain works differently when you're talking to other people. So it's a really good, important one to be able to do. Um, this one, I created this a while back. Let me let me open it and show you because it's, it's very basic. Actually, I don't even have to open it. If I can drag this over some. So this shortcut right here, um, it, every time my I, I relaunch the script, every time it's one of my scripts, it just reruns. It'll open that month's folder for the newsletter, but it's a dynamic shortcut. So this gets updated depending on what month it is. And in the old version, I didn't I didn't wrap the year. I just had the month. So when I reran it the other day, it went to 2023 of January. And I'm like, uh, I, 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 I don't have all these. And it took me a minute to go, wait a minute. Oh, I hardly took the year. <laughs> I just had to update it to take the, the year and the month. Um, right. and so it's nice because now this folder, it, it changes every month, but I don't have to do that. Right, It automatically updates for me, which is really cool. Right. That's a good one. Um, the Excel, we actually noticed a little issue with the Excel library, which by the time you guys watch this, we'll have the download updated. We've updated on our end. It, it, it wasn't a big thing, but there was a problem. Um, the FFmpeg processor, I was I was telling Isaiah and our fan, I was running it on some files that had like 60 gigs, if I remember right. Like it was a really big number. And it shrank it down to like 300 megs. Um, <laughs> it was a crazy number, yeah. And when you look at it, now I'm sure if I watched it in a 4K TV, I would see the difference. But on my computer, I'm like, it's almost the same thing. thing. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so prompt assistant, that that's our you know, one of our big tools we're selling. And, and it's a phenomenal tool. We've been adding, we we've been finding a few more bugs here and there. And then we've been adding some patches and um in um, which we'll see down here below, many modules that you can just import um and use. So it's it's really cool. Like let's let me let me um let me move this out of the way a little. In here, so let's say I wanted to go use my Excel. So this one is on, on the automator. Um, I wanted to use my Excel function library and I want to connect to it. So that's the code, right? Because I brought my Excel function library into these menus. And um, we have another one, which I haven't done yet, but I haven't imported it yet. So let me go to customize and I'm going to import the notify library. So you've hopefully seen our videos on our Notify class. It's really cool. So now, um, and Irfan had exported this, but I hadn't imported it yet. So let's see where, that's the one thing I need to be better at is paying attention to where I am. Um, 
It'd be nice if after it imports, if it would jump to, if you import, it should jump to that library. Like, actually, I'm, am I missing it? Oh, here it is. So now I'm going to save it, save and close. And now let's say I wanted to trigger a new menu. So I'd go to the notify and notice all the icons. This is the really cool thing. He did all the work. And now I can say, oh, I want to have um, an icon with an image and some text. And can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bam. There's my code for a template that I can go in and say, oh, oh, this general question, uh, notify with question icon, like, oh, I can change that text. Um, it makes it very simple. And of course, this this one we should be putting into an editor so it's easier to see what right. we're changing. And it's even commented, right? So right. like this is the one, it's a really, really great example of how once we have more and more modules, how easy it's going to be to borrow other people's stuff and to start coding. Right. And we did that during a hero call in which he said, you know, I have this one thing and I didn't have it. And he said, like, let me export it. He yeah. exported it. Then I imported it. And now I have it. It was so quick. Right. Like, it was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And another, now I'm going to launch another, this is a, a handwritten, and we can actually, let me go do this because I saw it in here, um, the Joe Joe's menu. This is that script I was just launching. Yeah. So let me edit now, this, I hand wrote this auto hotkey menu and sub menus uh, when I worked oh, at wow. TI a long, long time. And it still works, right? <laughs> but it took me so long because if you've ever built one of these, as Ace is smug, it's like, oh my God, they're so painful because <laughs> the order matters. And if you change things, and even when you add an item, if you want an icons, those got to be in a certain order after um, and then jumping around. And it's, it's just a pain in the butt. So, I, I said, Irfan, please, A, take what I did here, convert it from V1 to V2 code, because it's all V1 code, and then import it into Prompt Assistant. So that's what he's been doing. I actually don't have a, I don't know if he exported that. I don't think he did, so I can't import and show it. But it's got some really cool SQL um, functionality of truncating items and putting things in. If you have thousands of items that you need to do an endless search, it'll automatically wrap them. I, I can actually demonstrate it, because this, like I said, these all still, they still work, so... Oh, my auto assist is still running. <laughs> so if I took this and I hit my hotkey, I say SQL, and I want to check, convert that to an in list, it moves them. Now, in my template at TI, I had a query that was like um, from blah, 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 where, and then I had this var in, and this is what I had in my template, right? So I would convert these, and I could just cut and paste them. And well, actually, the, the other, let me redo that. So this was my template, right? Mm -hmm. So then I could just come in here. That's why I didn't have the surrounding quotes because right. <laughs> template, I had but in the one uh, Irfan's doing, I said, we can't assume people will have that, right? So just right, yeah. all of them. But yeah, there's a lot of great commands. If you work with SQL, like it'll make it really cool. But again, it'll be just a module people can just grab um, in, you know, import and start using really quickly. So that's really, really cool. All right, so where were we? So we did more stuff with prompt assistant. Notifi now the notifications, I mentioned that was, it brought in, and I think we made a couple changes to the notify class too, right? Or we're still working on trying to get it to understand the monitors, where the monitors, which, you know, yeah. putting them on your non-primary monitor. Yeah, right now it's doing that by mistake, but yes, uh, hopefully we can fix that soon. These were just the example. So this is what each one of these was a separate file. And let's just open one to show you. So yeah, in our notify class, we have examples in each one and you can go look at them, but wouldn't it be nice if you could just have those available and say, that's what is in here under notify. That's what these are. So under our example one folder, this mirrors that file, right? So you don't have to go find the file, go borrow. So it just dumps it in wherever you are for you, right? Right, so, which is... Excellent. It really is. It's just a huge time saver. So that he was, I think, working on those or simple file renamer. Now this one, and I did a video last week on it. Um, I was surprised I hadn't actually done a video on it. So when I re re rerun it, um, you can drag <laughs> files in here and you just, let's see if, I think I have, yeah, some example files. So drag them in here. And if I wanted that to say, um, re replace text, with um, Isaiah's. Oh, what happened to the S? 
Do you have any? Let me kill that auto suggester. Can you hit a space or something? Yeah. So if I if I understand what is going on, this thing it probably has a timer, and if you type too fast, it would. Oh, interesting. It, it would miss some letters. I have this I use the hot string. Yeah. Right. It... So so I I do have I I. When I started doing these type of things, I was encountering the same issue because of that little timer. And then I changed into an event base that every time you press a letter, then I go ahead and do it. Cool. But it might be, that might be the issue, but yeah. Probably, so you yeah. Too, yeah. You put it too fast. Yeah. I can guarantee that. It's the, the speed on which you typed right. that caused the issue. Yeah, well, um, that, that's interesting. Now this, we have it, this simple file renamer is actually borrowed from the multi renaming script from Maginator, if I remember right. Yeah. And uh, his version, it's amazingly powerful, but it, it it's so complicated. You got to have a doctorate to like understand how to use, you got to really remember what you're doing, right? So we, <laughs> we kept, you can do a regex. We kept the, you can change, you can search and you can replace, or you can leave this off, right? I could just, well, I guess you wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, if I want to delete stuff, I would do it this way, right? I would search for this, replace with nothing. Right, and I can change. I can make everything title case or uppercase, um, and I can hit apply or I, and the undo actually seemed a little buggy, but um, yeah, you get the idea. So it's a really cool little script. Um, if you frequently want to clean up your file names, it's awesome because it's so simple. It's very simple. Yeah, I love it. All right, um, this one you want to. Well, we can explain it. Um, we have a script that writes HTML and it goes across all of our courses. And there's V1 and V2 courses. And so right. when we were doing that sale last week, I was I realized it like on that day of like, oh crap, today's my seven <laughs> years of you know, <laughs> giving the finger to TI and, and corporate America. So I said, is this help me, you know, you go take care of the HTML side of getting the list of the coupons. Right. Um, and so he cranked it out. But what I realized when he gave me the list back, because I was trying to get the email done, the V1 and V2 were, they weren't organized clearly. And I like creating them in separate groups. So I had them go back and update it and decrease the font size around the learn more stuff, right? So right. we made that where it's part of our template and it made it super simple um, to just run that. Let's, let's. Um, I'm, I'm opening in the list right now. I got it because I have my screen share. Right. That's the only reason why. So we get to choose if we want, um, let's just do V1 and V2 courses and we'll say live test. This would be our discount code we wanted to use. And then we hit generate, it it dumps it all here, but then we can go to, I use this HTML writer and I'll just paste it here. And so bam, that's our V2 courses, our V1 courses, all. Now these, each link you can see over here, somewhere in here, um, live test the, on each, there that's is, the discount code. Yeah, that's the discount code, right? right? So it makes it super simple, super fast for me to, generate discounts for whatever I want. I can pick and choose the head. Then of course I can just come in here and say, oh, I actually don't want to make the sale on this one or this one, right? So it's super simple. Awesome. Uh, if I wanted to update that. And and I, why would we make a tool that does each of the- Yeah, like, 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 like select each of the courses, no. But you can imagine how long that would take me to put this thing together, <laughs> right? Because this is a hyperlink to the course. This is the hyperlink that incorporates a discount code like it's, and I'm like, why are we manually doing this? This is stupid, right? So we built a nice little script and then we tweaked it slightly to, um, we, we, at first we said, just do, just do this. And then I'm like, well, that's stupid. We should have a little brief summary of it. So we kept yeah. the, the, <laughs> the, the, the map yeah. of the param number of, um, how nested it was and things. Right. And then, and then I'm like, well, we really should have a link where they can learn more if they want to learn more before they buy. Right. Um, and then we then we added organizing it. So, yeah. Um, but again, now we have a script that I can hit in a second and make a sale. So it's really cool. Uh, this one, this is the one, Isaiah, so during the hero call. Um, let's see if I, I incorporated it here. The, um, the search and replace. What? And what I realized was sometimes when I do my stuff, I get, um, and I didn't actually borrow it back yet. I need to go do that. The... Um, Sometimes there's two line hard line returns that, and there really should be one. And so, just to get it done quickly, I wrote a, a thing just use stir stir replace instead of a regular expression. But I realized, hey, this might be like this, 
or it might be like this or like yeah. this. It's it's possible all these things. So yeah. we really need a regular expression. So during a hero call, I said to Isaiah, hey, well, and I use ChatGPT. I said to ChatGPT, make get take this code and make it where it's a regular expression that doesn't care about spacing. And and it did, but I'll simplify it. It it only made this one be like the backslash s plus. And I'm like, no, I need it everywhere. So I manually did it, but then during the hero call, we made it a little more robust even. Um, so I haven't actually, I need to go back and get that code. Uh, but yeah, that was, a, a, it's just another one of like, why am I manually <laughs> replacing the the hard, double hard line breaks, right? That should just be part of my my tool. Well, we already saw that one. Modules, yeah, here's where, I think Irfan first br broke each one into separate scripts to convert them to V2. So that's what all these are. All right. And then this one actually, is this, watch it, let me stop sharing. Why don't you share and we can talk through that random code gener actually the two let's do the two real quick because you had an example if we still have it it's in that folder right later well, on i realized this version um i i had a, a a third way of doing it so to speak so no the second way of doing it. so there's the v1 this is the original code right and um if we run this script it asks us how many codes we want we can put a crazy number here Ten thousand. How long each code must be? Let's say twenty characters each. And in the end, it takes a few seconds, but it comes up with a with a um, uh, with a total amount of clip, uh, like codes. Then right. now they are on your clipboard that you can now go ahead and paste somewhere, and you will see I have ten thousand lines. Right. Perfect. Now the the most important part about this script is the um. The fact that they're unique so right you will not find two codes that are exactly the same because part of what the code does is that it dedupes whatever you're doing here right so that's one of the main parts of the script we just simply converted that to be two that's right. it and you will notice that i added some performance checking here the reason for that is because i noticed i had a different way of doing it and i talked about this in a in a, in a different video which was using the um, the uh, random here, this random. So I have the string that creates the random string. I put it there. And I was do what I was just doing is I put it in a map and the map is gonna automatically be duped for me, right? So this is it's doing the same deduping. If the key has that, don't replace it. I just ignore it and continue with the next one. Now, what I noticed was that the difference in time and performance between, oh, right. So now I'm gonna, I, that's gonna take a couple of seconds and let's make 5,000 just to make it shorter or something. Well, it, so, it took so long earlier because you gave it 20 characters, right? And right that's, that's, a, that's another, yeah, that's another reason why, right? If so you make it 10,000, but with eight characters, it'll be much. Right. So, so I, I added, let me, let me stop right here. I added the performance check here just before the message box. So I just want to know the actual process. So I do this version, 10,000, let's say 10,000, but five characters long, right? And that would give me, what, seven seconds, right? So seven. That wasn't seven well, seconds. That wasn't seven seconds, really. Hold on, what? It, now, one. Because you, you're, are you, you're measuring the time of, of before you needed it after the prompt, after you type your number. Are you starting the time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. I see it. I see yeah. it now. I see the problem. So uh, depending on the prompt, that might take a little bit longer. So right. this is what we need to right. calculate: ten thousand, and then we said what five characters long. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all consistent. 424 milliseconds. So I think that's so, so, so half a second, right? Cool. Now, once I do it on this one, let's make sure that we have the prompt this after the prompt as well. When I do this, let's say 10,000 and five, so the same numbers, this takes considerably longer, like a long time. Now, I was thinking, like, why? So this is six seconds almost, right? So it took longer. Now, in the end, I realized 
this guy right here is really slow. I don't know why. Well, do, and, do me a favor too. G- p- create a new window and paste. Because w- which I'm not looking at your code really, but is there? Oh, good. Okay, there are ten thousand. Yeah, you do get the ten thousand. That that was not the issue. And 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 I put this output debug here to verify if it was just skipping some and just doing that over and over. No, it never skips anything. So I did get ten thousand random ones. But as soon as I replace that, it actually uh, went faster. So I, I realized the sort command with the way how I'm doing is really slow. Right. It's cool, but it's slow. I would definitely go with this approach and because it's a little bit faster in the well, end. That was what, like I said before, was when I started working with objects, I'm like, holy cow. And this is a great example of like probably the main reason why, right? Mm-hmm. Objects are just crazy fast. Like they're, they're right. Like, so in the end, I, I, I was kind of like surprised by the performance drop. Like it was noticeable. And I was like, why? And then I realized, yeah, this is a great, cool command, but that is not really right. efficient well, enough and if for what we're trying to do. you want 300, we probably wouldn't see a difference, right? Yeah, right. Like 300, I don't think that's going to be a, a, a big problem for you for five characters each. That Yeah, that's insanely fast, even if it is the, you know, the sword. Right, yeah, that, that didn't really... Now, this one is going to be instantaneously, I, I would yeah, assume, so... When I was at TI, I was I was doing stuff from a database and I'd often have like a million rows and I was trying to look to see if they had certain values in the text. And I had written some stuff where I was I was checking it. And that was this is before I knew Jackie. But Jackie, you know, on the forum is black holy man, right? Had said, Hey, why don't you do it this way and shove it into an object? And I'm like, whatever, I'll try yours, but whatever. Let me see. Like, it was like well. a fraction, tiny fraction of the time. It was less than like 10% of the time. And I'm like, right. I said, I don't understand why, but thank you. Like, Boy, I, holy crap. Yeah, exactly. My eyes are opened of like, <laughs> when you can work with objects, work with objects. Like they're crazy fast. Yeah. That is correct. So um, this start button clock, you can see it up here. Unfortunately, like if you're running Windows 11, unless you get the hack, which I've done a video on it, I believe, where it allows you to move it because I wasn't switching to Windows 11 unless I could put my taskbar on the side. I'm the just right side. Yeah, I've yeah. been doing this for so long, like it just has to be on the side because it. it I, I really like anyway. Um, but if you haven't done that, then this button clock doesn't work because your status bar is down here and the clock button isn't where whatever, and it just doesn't. At least the the instance we have doesn't work, and so I'm like. Well, that, all right, now we're down to like almost nobody. Um, it does now. This one, it's adapted now. I had Irfan convert it to V two, and I think I say I think you helped on that one too. But um, we were doing some math to figure out where it is. But it, I've had it since XP. Like that's how long I've been using this script. Was not obviously the V one version, right? But um, I love it because I can customize it and I can make it big. Why should and I don't need to know it's a start menu. I know it's a damn start menu. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, yeah. like, why don't I just take advantage of it? And then I can remove it from here and free up more space so I don't have to waste space. So yeah. So the, the interesting thing that we realized with this script is that um you were having two instances at the same time, right? Yeah. Now, oh right. Interestingly enough, the script has the single instance force at the top of the script and it is still not working. And then we realized. If you have the same name, the same script name on everything, but you have it in a different folder, this single instance force will not recognize that as the same script. Because, um, and I was reading about it in the, in the help file, even if you don't create a GUI, every single auto hotkey script has a hidden GUI. Yeah. Um, and that hidden GUI has a title. And the title sadly, has the path of the file. The so path. the full path, the full thing. So if you run the same script from two different folders, they will not see each other as being the same. They will be, they will be referred to as two different locations. And I, and I realized I tested it, and I looked at the, the GUI, and I was like, yeah, that's the problem. Let me propose something here. We can test it if you think it, if it has a chance. Right. In that test that you did, where you were proving that, yeah, that that is the way it works, did you set the working directory? I did not. What if we programmatically set the working directory? I, right? I, I, no. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think it would help. Let me, can you stop sharing for a second? Yeah, because sure yeah, I'm curious. Because it'd be great if it did, right? Because right, yeah. I don't normally do that because it's not something right. I do. But 
if it actually got around this problem, that'd be awesome. So let me show you. This is a simple script. I'm just going to save it somewhere. So I'm going to put it here. Right? So I run this script. Um, I run it with either version. Why don't you do single license force in it just to... So oh, right. Sure, sure, sure. Prove that part as well, right? Right, right, right. So let me just add the uh, single instance and let me add the requires as well. And this happens with V1 and V2. So this problem is for both of oh, my, my thing I went through was. So I'm going to run it. Um, here it is. And the, sorry, well, let me save that into a file because I'm going to move it later. So I'm going to save it in duplicate test. Yes, sir. I run it from here. And you will notice that the script is there. If you double click, this is the hidden window that you will get. This is the hidden window. And you see what the title is at the top of the script. Now, if I go ahead and copy that into a different folder, so let's just uh, copy it here, and I run it from this folder instead, what you might expect because of the single instance force is that it should close the previous script, but that's not what happens. When I go back here, I will have two icons, both of them of the duplicate test, so the single instance is not really working. Why? because one of them has one title and the other one has a different title. So the title of the window changes because of the path, right? Um, and now when you say, does changing the working directory work? Well, I don't think this title bar here is about the working directory. I think it's the path. Yeah, the I'd files. still say test it. We were yeah, let's, let's test it out, right? So um, let me close them both. And at this point, um, let me just edit this real quick. And I would say um, set working directory, set working there, right? And that's going to be, let's say the C drive or something, right? Let's say C call slash tab. Right, OK. That's fine. Uh, doesn't really matter what it is. The fact oh, is, it exists. <laughs> yeah. Did I save it? I think I did. All right. Oh, okay. Yes. I know that it's working because it doesn't matter. Um, so we have to put a temp instead, instead of hard coding. Just do that instead. All right. So now we run it. So even though it's running, the working directory is in a different place. We're going to copy it here, replace. So we both both should have the same working directory. Um, let me see. Ooh. No. Okay. So I do get the duplication here. Yeah. And when I open the the things, yeah, they still show yep. the path to the file. So yep. if if you're having a problem in which the file, even though it has single instance, is being repeated, then yeah, that's the reason why is because the location of the file is different. And that's what AutoHotKey is using to determine whether that uh, it, script is already running. And just FYI, mine, it seems to have happened because when you launch it from Explorer, it's getting launched through the Dash thing. But when I'm using Studio to launch it, it's using a different, you know. Um, now, I have launch. a weird way of fixing that. Yep. If I can set the title of its own window to whatever I want, then it will always be the same no matter where I move. So you know that we have the wind subtitle come out. I was going to ask you. Right. This is, this is, so I don't if know I could work on a hidden on the hidden title. You, you, you could because you can you can you have detect hidden windows on. You can turn that on. So you can detect hidden windows if you want. So yeah. you can right. So you but use the change the title of the hidden window. Yeah, yeah, you can. So, okay. so long as you have that on. But now the problem is, how do I know the title of my own script, which is a special window? I don't know if we have access to that. I think we can. We can get it. But it is a weird thing because I could tell the script, hey, change the title of its own window to something specific. And yeah. now it doesn't matter where I have it. It will always um, uh, know that it's the same. Right? We can follow up on it because we're planning to make a video on it separately. We'll, maybe we'll... Right. 
prove that out first as a good workaround. So yeah, all right. Yeah. Back to oh, let me get off. Let me share again. Um, this next one, and I've been I'm getting close to wrapping up this market research project I was doing, but in it, um, this Isaiah's helped me a couple years ago write a very in Excel in SPSS. I create all the reports, and I can't show them because they're all privileged data. But um, it creates a table with the analysis, and then another table following up with three rows instead of one to one row. It's hard to explain. Up here, you'd have this ten rows. The bottom would have thirty rows, if that makes sense, right? And every third row is the significance testing back to the first row. So it's really hard to read through it because you're like, hey, is there a difference here? Oh, I got to go back up here and find that row. So we automated merging the two tables together and color coding and doing a lot of other stuff. What was really cool was I, I just ran it the other day. I'm like, it still works flawlessly because we did it all with Calm and as Ace is a good programmer. And it just, I was really impressed that like it still worked without any changes and everything was great. So that was really cool. That's um, awesome. Yeah. I see Thomas has been doing, or, or unless you're doing something for Thomas, but I yeah, Thomas, he did. Yeah, client is doing some work. Um, yeah, that I was just changing a hot key. My main, this is my main on hockey script, which is like 2,500 lines, I think. Uh, my Google search, uh, this is one Rizwan was working on an update to it. And what I realized, and let's, let's is, um, and I said, hey, Isaiah, I said, this is stupid, but um, we should be adding this to, um, what's it called? Google search. We should be adding this to a lot of our scripts is um, to to have a hotkey that, hey, if I hit control backspace to actually be able to delete, if you're in an edit in the Win32 control editor windows, right, that yeah. you'll get this funky box. And so actually, let's just comment this, this guy out, launch it. And now if I'm typing and I hit control backspace, I get these weird boxes and it's really, right. if you're someone who use, I use that all the time, it drives me nuts. <laughs> so I'm like, Hey, what, you know, this is stupid. Let's add this here. And then I'm like, is hey, it's like, we got a lot of tools where we're doing, like, this should be on everything where we don't have a scintilla, at least a scintilla control. Cause then you, they actually work properly. But now if I relaunch it and I start typing and I hit control backspace, it does what you would think it, it does. If I do spaces, it does. And this is actually, word. It, another thing it, it dawned on me as AS was because in the course we're almost done with, you were wow. actually, this is one of the lectures. The, right? the one of the, the yeah. if the, you want to delete a videos. character, it's one thing, but if you want to delete this, or you can go, you know, hit select, hit home and delete or what, you know, the whole delete, thing. Yeah. Type. But yeah, the other thing Rizwan's adding to this, which mine, this V1, this is a V1 script, not a V2. And the, um, Rizwan will, he's actually, done most he, of he it did, he did convert yeah exactly yeah. So he but did a very good... i don't think he finished the second part which was whatever you select should be saved these are hard coded uh -huh. up above to just say hey select if it's selected great but it's hard coded in the script if you want to change it you have to go in here and change your preference not your preference change the program yeah you should take the any you know hey if it's been done next time i run this it would only come up with the auto hotkey if right, I, exactly. Probably, because, because, yeah, exactly. I, I will probably make several searches on the same place, one after the other, right? So yeah, I don't and even then, it's, it's removing weird. the ones that right. I don't want, right? right. Every because time. for a while, I was, especially like the Microsoft and tech, when I was doing SQL stuff, mm -hmm. there were other places where I'm like, they had far more likely to have the answers I wanted. Yes. And so what this script does is it will take the term and you can tell it to do this. It'll put quotes around it for you. But um, it will search these locations for you with what you type in and open it. So let's just, you know, why am I doing all this stuff? So, um, so it will run it. It will use Google to search those sites for you. Right. right. So I, I use this thing and I, and I watch and I got to tell Irfan, dude, you got to use this tool, man. Yeah. He does a onesie twosie and I'm like, it's just a have a hotkey, it pops up, you type and you get all the all the Google searches of all at once. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. So it's a great simple one. Um I actually is a added, I forget what I added to it, because I think before I just had them all done, but I didn't have the preference center. After when you made the V1 intro to GUIs course, uh -huh. that was when I first actually added the checkboxes because I didn't even have oh. those at the time. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I'm like, I just had it run on all of them. Right. Here and edit it. But I'm like, well, this is simple. Like, yeah. GUIs are easy and not a hotkey. <laughs> Indeed.
Yeah, so that would be this one. And there's a lot of other stuff in this one, which we're gonna I think I might have Rafi and also pull out some other things from it. I made a folder as a is on the S drive for us to convert. This is my one and I can't demo it, but if I hit a certain hotkey, it kills the power to all my monitors. Um, yeah, about like, the power, but yeah, I remember we were yeah. talking about that. It's not really that um it's not locking the no. using the Windows locking mechanism, it's actually the, the monitors go down. Like, yeah, I see that. Because I can hit a different hotkey and they come back up and I don't have to right. enter a crazy password, right? Right, exactly. So, um, yeah, so I, I made a note to Irfan to say, hey, convert that to V2. It, it Probably it's identical. I don't think it's it probably is because you're doing some DLL calls. Although, so. I know, I think there might be a DLL call. Um, because of that, it, it might be almost the same. Yeah. Um, here's just one I have with my path to hot strings. Um, this is the one where we were working in the SQLite converter and we realized that like, holy cow, this gets complicated because if your text is, what if um, I had the big, um, so what if I wanted to convert this to the end list? Um, these, you know, we don't want to, if these are single quotes or double quotes, depending on what you're wrapping them with, it's really complicated. And you can't just simply say, hey, replace it because we need to um, look at what it is. Because also, what if what if this was like that? Now suddenly, yeah, you, you know, got little, you got really a little bit of a problem there, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we were doing with, um, I had remembered Maestrith had done some stuff using the mod to say, hey, I saw a quote, now I'm inside of quotes. So if you do every other one, now I know I'm in this group of things, do replacements in here. Um, but yeah, that was what I played with that one. Um, and actually it was from this, this is where I borrowed it from. I created that file from just extracting it from the stuff of LinkedIn because uh, the, the LinkedIn export had an issue with not, Excel wasn't correctly fine. And it all boils back to, as a, it's the whole bomb issue. Once we realized uh -huh. that it wasn't setting the bomb, that actually takes care oh, of it. Oh, gee. Okay, I get it. Yeah, so, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we already actually talked about this one at the right. top. Um, but yeah, so it's been a, you know, 76 files. It's been a, yeah, I'd say it's like a medium week for us. Um, we still, um, there was a little bit of the holiday stuff going on, but um, yeah, we got some good work. And our, our new course is almost done. We're right. Sitting there. But yeah, thanks for uh, right. watching. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Please like the video if you learned something or want to see more of these videos. It really helps us out. Have an awesome day. Cheers. Bye.